Hello everyone, welcome to Jolly Molly TV. Today we're going to work on another fun block in Kimberbell's Pumpkins and Potions Ladder Quilt Project. In today's video, we are going to be working on this block right here with the tree, and that is called Frightful Night. So let's go ahead and grab your plastic pouch system or plastic bag system that you have labeled Frightful Night. And let's head over to the machine and let's get started stitching. Okay, we're at the machine. I have a bobbin with white thread placed in the machine down below. I have my eight by eight inch hoop on my machine filled with a piece of the poly no show mesh stabilizer in it. We're good there. I have pulled my plastic pouch system that's labeled Frightful Night because we're going to pull all of this out. We need the background fabric and we need the applique fabric. I want to pull this aside. I am going to also grab a piece of batting, which is a seven by seven inch piece out of my pre-cut batting stash. Okay. And now I'm going to get some thread that's going to coordinate with this fabric. And this is like a light mint green slash turquoise. You can see my thread there. So I think this one will be a nice coordinating thread. Let me get the plastic wrapper off of it so you can see the true fabric color here. So whatever fabric that you're using for this block, you want to find something that coordinates, blends in, and we're going to be using this for the set for several stitches. We're going to be using it for, there you go, the the placement line for the batting, the tack down for the batting, the placement for the fabric, the tack down of the fabric, and I'm going to quilt it with this color as well because I want the tree to stand out. I don't want the quilting to compete with the fabric and the tree. So I'm going to use a matching thread for all of these first steps and put that in the top of your machine and then we can get started stitching. So now let's load the design. We're going to click on embroidery. We're going to go to my flash drive. We're going to click on pumpkins and potions. And we want to go to the quilting design first. I'm going to look for Halloween eight. And I'm looking for the six by six design, which is right here. That's cool. It's got the little witch's cauldron, the bats and the stars. So we're going to click set. Now I'm going to add the embroidery design on top of this. If you can't add, don't worry. You're going to stitch this out first, clear your machine memory, come back in and load the embroidery design. But I'm going to go ahead and click add and I'm going to go to my flash drive back to pumpkins and potions. And I'm looking for the Oh frightful night tree, which is right here. Click on that. Click set. Everything is centered exactly as it needs to be. All I need to do is click embroidery and we're ready to go. So let's go back to the hoop cam. Here we go. I've got my minty green thread in the top of the machine that will match my fabric. So let's go ahead and put the foot down and let's stitch out the placement line for the batting. Here we go. So now we're going to put the batting down. Make sure that you completely cover the stitch lines on all sides and once you've placed it correctly, put the foot down, use the same thread that you have on top and let's tack down the batting. Okay, 
Now I want you to take the hoop off the machine and go over to a table and I want you to trim away all of this excess batting around all four sides. And I'll meet you right back here. Okay, that looks good. So now let's put the foot down and let's stitch out the placement line for the fabric. Okay, so now we can place the fabric down. Make sure you cover all of those lines. And if you have directional fabric, make sure you have it facing up. This will be the top, this will be the bottom. This is kind of a tossed, but I like this direction. Most of these bats here are facing up, so I'll do it that way. And then I'm gonna feel for my batting, the sides of my batting that tells me where the fabric is positioned. And I like that, so I'm gonna put my foot down, hold the fabric down with my stylus, and let's tack down this fabric. Keep your fingers away from the moving needle. I just wanna say a huge thank you to Kimberbell for sponsoring me in this project and for providing the pumpkins and potions quilting bundle for me to use in this project. This quilting bundle is amazing. It is definitely something that you can look at in order to enhance this project. It comes with all of these amazing designs. You get a cauldron, you get a spider web, some happy ghosts that look like they have little glasses on. This border is amazing. I cannot wait to show you the borders. And you get this cool pumpkin and ghost and 31 on there. It's just a bunch of fun. So if you're able to get this quilting bundle, it's going to just make your project pop. The borders, I cannot wait. Look at these borders. There's two of them and I'm gonna to try to incorporate both of them in this project. You get enough files in each of the designs to be able to do any combination of size that you could possibly think of for this project and our other projects. And you also get the block towel sizes for the clear blue towels quilting method as well in each of the designs. So I highly recommend if you can do this, this is amazing. Please use the link in the description below to purchase the bundle from Kimberbell.com. That looks good. So now I'm gonna do the quilting design in the same color thread. So put your foot down and let's stitch out the quilting. It's a three minute in real life stitch out. Here we go. That turned out very nice, perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna take that thread off the machine and I'm going to load black thread as the next stitch we're going to do is the tree. So grab some black thread, put it in the top of your machine and this is actually the placement line where we're gonna put the black fabric here in a second. So go ahead and put that thread up on top and put the foot down and let's stitch the placement line for the tree. Okay, so now you wanna position your black fabric to completely cover all of the tree and its branches. Make sure I've got everything covered because this branch is going to come over to here and that one's going to go to there. So we're looking good. So either put tape and hold it down or just hold it with your stylus and let's tack down this black fabric. Okay, 
So now what you're going to do is take the hoop off the machine, go to a table, and I want you to trim away this excess of the black fabric around. So you're trimming the outside of the tree, outside. This is a little tricky, so you need to get as close as you can. I don't believe the trunk is a satin stitch, so just get as close and as neat as you can on the trunk. These are going to be satin stitches, it looks like. At least it's going to cover the fabric. This is just going to be a decorative outside. So just get as close as you can, as neat as you can, without nicking the stitches. Challenge, huh? But you can do it. And I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so we've got that trimmed up. That was a little bit of a challenge, but you did it. Yes, you did. Okay, so now we're going to leave black thread up on the top of the machine, and we're going to stitch out the detail around the tree. Put down. This is about 11 minute in real life stitch out. All right, here we go. <laughs> Okay, one thing that I'm going to change up, which they don't mention in the instructions, is I am going to stop and I'm going to put a black bobbin down below. My tension is okay, but I can see where it might be pulling just a teeny bit of the white up the top and I don't like that. So I'm going to switch out my bobbin. I think I have enough black on this one to do it. If not, I'll have to wind some more. But I'm going to put black down below. And it looks good so far, so I'm not going to back up and redo that. I'm going to leave it alone. I am just going to continue on from where I am, but just so that's black on top and black bobbin thread down below. That, I think, will make it look a little bit nicer. All right, let's continue. Okay, I have an arrow on my machine that says check and re-thread upper thread. You can see my thread has stopped, so I can't really trim it this way. I'm going to walk it through the path because I can't grab it from the bottom. Bear with me here as I walk it down because you don't want to ever pull the thread back up. You always want to pull the thread in the direction that it's supposed to come out. But if you can't grab it down here, then you kind of just gently walk it. Don't pull until it comes out. Okay, and let's re-thread. Okay, click OK. I'm going to re-thread it. And then I'm going to look, and I need to come back here. It stopped right about there, so I'm going to go to my screen cam. And I'm going to use the plus or minus key. I'm going to go back probably 20 stitches. Nope. Actually needs to go a little more than that. 40 should about do it. All right. And then I just click OK. And then it will start from that point. OK. So we can go back to the hoop cam. And put the foot down. Make sure we have don't have any loops and let's continue stitching. Here we go. All right, that looks cool. It looks like a gnarly tree. 
I can definitely see why they use those stitches because it kind of gives it a more haunted feeling. That's cool. All right, so now I'm gonna take out the black thread and I'm gonna put in a gold thread, which is gonna be for the stars, all right? So go ahead and put a gold thread or whatever color thread you'd like your stars to be in the top of your machine. Okay, so now I've got the gold thread on top, foot down, and we're gonna stitch out the stars. This is a five minute in real life stitch out. Here we go. Alright, so now what I want to do, walk that piece of thread out, okay, I want to switch my thread out for the text that says, uh, Oh Frightful Night. And Kimberbell recommends white, but because of my fabric, I think that black is going to show up better than what white will. I think white would get lost on my print, so I think black would be a good choice. So you need to choose what color thread would show up nicely on your fabric and load that thread on the top of your machine. This isn't too long of a stitch out. This is only two minutes in real life. So after this, we're done. We are not going to be stitching the last stitch. That is a kind of a alignment line that Kimberbell uses to tell the machine where to center the previous embroidered design. So here we go. Let's stitch out Oh Frightful Night. That is great. Look at that. Okay. This block is done. Again, we're not going to stitch this last stitch, which is just a straight line for alignment up here. We don't need to do that. So let's take the hoop off your machine and let's take this block over to the table and let's finish it up. Okay. Isn't that a cool block? I really like that with the bats and everything on the background. It's really spooky. So now the last thing we have to do is to square up this block. We're looking to square it up to six and a half by six and a half inches. So I'm going to use my ruler and I'm betting that this outer stitch line is going to be six and a half. And it is from here to here is six and a half. And from top to bottom is just a shy of six and a half. So it'll be perfect to use to square up this block. So I'm going to turn it outside so I have less bulk on the stabilizer to deal with. And I'm going to go right on that stitch line and then just a hair past it. Okay. That will be my first cut. Okay. Then I'm going to flip it around, use my mat to line it up. 16, 16 and a half, so it'll be 10 and a half. Put it right there. We lined up. Can I see the stitch line? Yes, I can. So now, whoops, I'm going to cut. All right, so those two sides are trimmed. I'm going to do the same thing with the other two sides. See the stitch line? Yes, I can. Put it just under the ruler, flip it around, line it up with my mat. 16 is 10 and a half. Go to 10 and a half, make sure I'm all lined up. Okay, can I see the stitch line? Yes, it is just underneath that ruler. And dun 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 dun, there you go. You now have a finished block. Oh, frightful night. 
Isn't that fun? Congratulations, you did it. So I hope you had as much fun today making this block as I did. So please stay tuned here on Jolly Molly TV for more fun and more cute blocks in Kimber Bell's adorable project, Pumpkins and Potions. And until I see you next time, take care and happy stitching. Bye-bye.